You're watching ESPN's Champ Week, presented by SoFi. Set for game number two of four here at Kansas City. It is the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. The quarterfinals and now the regular season champion stage arrives. It's Kansas State, a winner last night against TCU, against Baylor, a one-loss team and as dominant a performance as we have seen in quite some time in the regular season in the Big 12. Awaiting the winner of this game, Oklahoma State, Cade Cunningham, and the Pokes survive as Sean McNeil's three didn't beat the buzzer, and Mike Boynton's Pokes win a close one in quarterfinal number one. So they move on. They will take on the winner of Baylor, Kansas State, in our first semifinal tomorrow. Still in the quarterfinals to come. Two more great games tonight. Kansas and Oklahoma, followed by Texas and Texas Tech. Set for game number two of four. Bob Oshusen here with Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe. And Fran, now the regular season champion, takes center stage. It's hard to be more dominant and be better than Baylor was this year. Great season, and a win today would make it the best 23-game start in school history. They would be 22-1. and one. Started out early with an unblemished record. One loss in league play to Kansas. Obviously, the break set them back somewhat, but they managed to win the first title in school in, in 71 years. And of course, we know about them. They're 47 and five over the last two years. It's a three guard attack. And all of these guys can be dominant at different times. The numbers speak for themselves. What a, what a trio. They play so well together. No ego. It's a collective ego. And Holly Rowe, what a season. Emotionally, it has been for Baylor as well. Well, that's right. This Baylor team has been through so much adversity throughout the course of their season, but they've overcome it all, and they really say that it is a culture of joy. Hashtag J-O-Y. Jesus, others, and yourself. That means putting yourself behind the team, and they've absolutely done this. Look at the joy they had in the locker room. This is an unselfish group. Their two All-Americans, Jared Butler and Davion Mitchell, both lead the league in assists. They look for their own, they give it to others, and all three of those guards that are stars you're talking about, Fran, have each scored a 30-point game this year. This is a team that shares the basketball, and that has brought great joy to the Baylor Bears. Well, to keep up with these guards, Kansas State is going to have to rely on their guards. And we saw the freshman Nigel Pack fill it up, five of six from three-point land in the first round win against TCU last night. He might have to be even better than that today for the Cats to have hope. And he's played this team twice, not a lot of success, but he's growing up on the job in a game today, a good game today for Nigel Pack will certainly give him confidence he can do it against the best in this league. And Kansas State will at least need Baylor to maybe miss a few in the two games that these two teams played during the regular season. Baylor was 53% from three in those two games combined and averaged over 103 points in the two wins. Shot clock down to seven, though, on this opening possession for Davion Mitchell. Watch off the dribble. He clears some space on McGurl. Mark Vital. Offensive rebound. Out to Butler. Welcome to Baylor basketball. You just said it, Bob. Great kick out by Mark Vital. No Vital, no title. That's what they say in Waco. Vital with a bump underneath, but he couldn't stop Deshaun Gordon from getting Kansas State on the board. Teague from the corner. Yes. That was a left-handed pass by Davion Mitchell, who quietly and recently not so quietly has become one of the best guards in the country. Macy Oteague made 10 threes in the season finale against Texas Tech on Sunday. That's pretty good playmaking as Mike McGurl shovels one to Davion Bradford. When we talked about Bradford last night. I'm going to love watching him continue to grow up today. Seven feet, 260, good hands and feet. That's a good start for a big man. Mitchell scoops. 
He'll go to the free throw line. Foul called on Selton Miguel. Watch the baseline drive now by Mike McGurl, the senior, and watch Bradford head right to the rim. Good job by the big fella. Any baseline drives, big fellas, you go right to the top of that restricted arc circle. Well, Bruce Weber has a very young basketball team, and you'd hope, for his sake, you talked about it last night, that Mike McGurl thinks about using that extra year of eligibility and coming back to stay with this group because this experience that they're getting right now and even winning a few games down the stretch can only do them good next year. Oh, I, I agree. Three freshmen have started most of the year in conference play. Miguel, Pack, and Bradford. Yeah, they have combined now for 71 starts made by those three true freshmen. And that trails only Kentucky in terms of most starts made by true freshmen in all of college basketball. Key for the Wildcats tonight, don't turn the ball over. No easy run out baskets. Well, Nigel Pack going up against the defensive player of the year in the league here. Gets free from Davion Mitchell and then turns it over right can't, on cue. Yep, can't do that. Would have been better off just shooting it and letting those big guys go get it on the glass. Butler's pass is deflected and taken by Nigel Pack. This K-State defense over the last five games has really, really been vintage Bruce Weber defense. It's going to be a good challenge today for them. Ashwan Gordon tried to reverse it. Here comes Butler. Butler left alone. In and out. Offensive rebound mark vital, but he shuffled his feet. Vital wearing the face mask today. He took an elbow right to the face from Jonathan Chamochachua about a week ago. And so he's still feeling the after effects of that. Holly? Well, this is a new custom mask that he's wearing today to protect that kind of um, eye area and higher uh, cheekbone. He says that he loves how it makes him look. He looks like a villain. I asked him if he's Batman. He said, no way. I love mm -hmm. to be the villain out there. I don't know if he really needs to be wearing this mask anymore. I just know that he really loves wearing this mask. <laughs> Shot clock down to five. A girl to Miguel. Bounce pass. And there's the freshman again, Davion Bradford. Another nice dish by this. This time, Selton Miguel, the freshman. This team knocked off Oklahoma at home late in the season, and it really gave them a shot of adrenaline. Vital. Blocking foul is called. So Vital will go to the free throw line as Deshaun Gordon is hit with his first. Little dump off right here. And in the opinion of the official, the defender was not said. I would agree. Now, Mark Vital on senior day at Baylor finished off his home career for the Bears in about as Mark Vital a way as he could. Picked up his second double figure rebound or fourth double figure rebound game of the season. His first double double. 15 points, or 10 points, pardon me, and 15 rebounds in the win over Texas Tech. And that great save out of bounds to Macy Teague allowed Teague to hit his 10th three of the game. A little pressure right here, knowing that the Cats can throw it away sometimes. By the way, Bob, Scott Drew in 18 years. They started out 12 and 52 in the league. This is the first game that he's ever coached in Big 12 play where his team is over 500. Wow. How about that? that was a long climb. Yes, it was. Bradford off the save. Tom Machachua threw it right to him. And Davion Bradford will go to the line. Davion Bradford is part of a connection to Bruce Weber and Chris Lowry. This program, because both of those guys were once head coaches at Southern Illinois, which is about an hour and 45 minutes south in Carbondale, Illinois, recruited St. Louis hard. 
And you remember, Bob, guys like Xavier Sneed, DJ Johnson, Nino Williams. They started recruiting Davion Bradford when he was a freshman in high school. And boy, did he stay loyal because he's played a lot this year. He's been really impressive. And for a seven foot kid to have this kind of touch, hands, feet, the future's really bright. He's also gotten into shape, significantly yes. so, since arriving in Manhattan. He's dropped about 23 pounds since he first got to Kansas State. Okay. Led Sermons. This is a violation. Can't uh, come back Baylor. in balance. Yep. So we'll step aside. Big 12 awards. There are a lot of them for Baylor. We'll tell you about that when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Philip 66. Proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball and the Lincoln family of luxury SUVs. The Big 12 announced their season-long awards this past week. And Cade Cunningham, not only the freshman of the year, but also the player of the year. Scott Drew, the coach of the year, and Davion Mitchell, the defensive player of the year. We won't see David McCormick, the most improved player of the year, when they take on Kai Jones in Texas, or take on Oklahoma coming up a little bit later on, but Kai Jones and Mac McClung will square off. But when you talk about Davion Mitchell, his teammates call him off night because the guy he's guarding usually does have an off night. This is a young man from Hinesville, Georgia, that played at Auburn as a freshman for Bruce Pearl, transferred here, redshirted, and has become basically an NBA first-round pick. I think Davion Mitchell should be the national defensive player of the year. Last year was Marcus Garrett. I think I would share the wealth. And he is on the list of the 10 semifinalists for that Naismith Defensive Player of the Year award. Adam Flagler making his first appearance. And what should have been a takeaway for Selton Miguel, but he lost it along the sideline. Only a freshman. He's from Angola. Went to prep school in Florida, and he will become, maybe not Davion Mitchell, but already I've been impressed this season with his outstanding on-ball defense. And he's, he's got a challenge right now guarding Jared Butler. Butler sets up T. Mark Vidal, another offensive rebound. Floater for Butler is good. Those guys are unstoppable in the mid-range. The three of those guys shoot 70% inside the arc. Think about that. Guards, you've got to have what I call a high paint game. Nice seal inside again by Davion Bradford. Terrific. You don't see kids this size, this young and early in their career, have the kind of feel for low post play. Bruce Weber calls him an old-fashioned aircraft carrier. That's what we used to call the big fellas. Uh, Chamo Chachua is called for a moving screen. Watch Davion Bradford do a great job of sealing his man up the lane. Look where everyday John is. He's caught behind. And a great pass by Mike McGurl. Well, guys, Bruce Weber told us the guy that he's been the most surprised by and excited about this year is Davion Bradford. And we're seeing that early in this game with six early points. Davion himself said, I wasn't sure how much I'd play as a freshman. I kind of thought I'd be happy to come in and get a few minutes here and there and gain some experience. So he's thrilled that he's playing this much. He's been tall his whole life. He said in fifth grade he was six feet, seventh grade six five, and then by freshman year in high school six ten. He may even still be growing. He says he still get some growing pains in those knees once in a while. That's scary. <laughs> as Butler scoops and will go to the line. Nigel Pack called for the foul. It's been a very difficult year for K-State basketball. 13-game losing streak, but down the stretch of the season. Guys like Bradford and Pack have stepped up. Seventeen plus a game during the season for Jared Butler. Number three in the league in scoring. Number two in assists. Number one, not only shooting the three percentage-wise, but also number one 
and the Big 12 at the number of threes made per game at 2.7 per game. Uh, can't do that. Careless. And Mitchell, the beneficiary. Meyer with a shot fake. Behind the back gets fancy. Oh boy. And bailed out by Flagler. Butler throws it to nowhere. Here comes Pack. McGurl step back three. Couldn't handle the bullet pass from Butler. Well, it's early, but K State so far pretty good on the defensive end that we expected they would be. Although, after those first two meetings with Baylor this year, this is a little bit of a surprise. Macy Oteague replaces Jared Butler. Kansas State down by only five, and seven of their nine scored by Davion Bradford, who's on the bench right now. So they're going to need McGurl and Pack to knock some shots down, you'd think, at some point. Here's Pack double team. Teague all over him. Selton Miguel drives it. And just rolling one off the rim. And it's Casey Isiego. Got to finish those. Point blank. Got to make that, big fella. Lothamba a little late joining the play. Thamba at the elbow. Bruce Weber will give the big fella Flo Thamba that shot all day long. Simply because it means the guards don't shoot it. There's Nigel Pack. Rims one out. Meyer the rebound. Meyer tied up down the lane, forced one up, it won't go. Offensive rebound for T. Davion Mitchell explodes and banks one in. All three of those guards, we talk about the three-point shooting, all three of those Baylor guards can make that floater play. I said 70%, it's more like 67, but that is really high. Rudy Williams. Yes, off the feed from Pack. Now the Juco transfer missed some games in the middle of the Big 12 season, but Bob, he gave him a spark yesterday. That last trip down, how fast was that acceleration from standing still to into that floater for Davion Mitchell? No he question. Just, from zero to 60 in about a half second. He's a sports science experiment. Can't hit the three here. And a foul will be called on Thamba. Davion Mitchell... The defense has been really good throughout his career, but he came to Baylor, he worked on his offense, and that's why he's one of the best guards in the country. Mid-range floater, no charges, just charging a basket. When you come to Kansas City, there are two things you know will be good. The basketball, and the barbecue you have to get barbecue while you're here in town and a little interesting fact that people may not realize did you know the godfather of barbecue is right here from kansas city of course henry perry started cooking way back when he was very good look at this uh, advertisement i love this opossum raccoon groundhog mutton he uh, opened his own restaurant on the corner of 19th and highland by 1920 so he should get the credit for being the godfather of barbecue here in Kansas City. It's a great point. You know what, Bob? Arthur and Charlie Bryant worked for Mr. Perry, and they went into business themselves. Arthur Bryant's pretty good. Vital down the lane. A lot of contacts and an offensive foul called on Mark Vital. Although I agree with Holly. I'm glad they narrowed the menu down to more of the pork brisket end. It'd be hard to go in and get possum. Ask, yeah, ask for the like or the, the combo plate. Can I have the <laughs> raccoon and groundhog sandwich? The lean raccoon. Oh, the lean raccoon. I don't think so. Yeah. 
This is a classic example. Watch the law. They got it last night. A girl. Yeah. Ready beautifully. And Deshaun Gordon lays it in. Yep. They bring that guard over the top like he's going out into the hallway, and he just turns the corner, heads to the basket. In the two previous meetings, Kansas State against Baylor never held a lead for even one moment in either game. And Baylor pulled away in both and drubbed K-State. This is a really good start for the Wildcats, down by only two. As Flagler sends one cross court to T. He fades away. That's off the heel. A chance to possibly tie or take the lead. There's an offensive foul call on the crossover so. by Kasuki. That guy, that had to be the defensive player of the year if he was legal. That has to be the defensive player of the year, in my opinion. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving. No way, no way. When you're a team like Kansas State, you need that call. And I think the coach knows it. Yep. He knows. Can't do anything about it. I would have given Davion Mitchell the defensive, the Naismith Awards just for that play if he was legal. But when you're the underdog, you need that call. You need it to be right. I love the defense. Butler to Vital. And he missed the bunny. And then commits another foul. Actually, they've got Macy Oteague for a foul away from the ball, and he's a little perplexed by that call. I thought it was Vital chasing after his own miss, and that would have been Vital second. Well, I'm not surprised by the K-State defense. They've got to score points, but this defense has been very good down the stretch. Suki is able to bank it in, and we are tied. The St. Louis connection. Bradford and Kasupke, they've been playing together for a while. Freshman from Chaminade High School in St. Louis. This is the classic case, Bob, of, of a team playing the night before and getting their legs. Meyer from the corner gives Baylor the lead back. I would argue that Matthew Meyer changed the season around for Baylor at Western West Virginia last week, coming off the Kansas loss, when he went 10 points in a row. Look at that. Same play. Lob again, the yep. girl to Gordon. Where's the scouting? <laughs> Terrific delivery both times. Davion Mitchell traveled. Now, this is a play they ran last night. The guard comes to the top of the key. Watch him keep going. Keep going. They chase him, and you can't chase him. Big fella's got to back off. Take a look. There's no help. Nice catch. Good execution. That looked like a replay of the same play from two different angles. That was two different alley-oops. Exactly, and we saw him get it twice last night. Baylor already with 10 first-half turnovers, and we are barely past the midway point of the first half. So a sloppy start for the one seed, although Davion Mitchell gets a deflection and a steal here. Vital cruises in, gets it up, and Macy O.T. puts it home. It was hard to tell, but they were trying to run a raw play again, and Pack, diminutive, got that pass deflected. By the way, I know diminutive. <laughs> Davion Bradford back in the game and back up to the basket. How about this young guy? Did you notice how he caught the ball and never dipped it? Kept it high. Textbook low post catch right there. to shoot. Teague off to Vital. Back to Mitchell. Great cut. Dejuan Gordon lost him and a great find. 
I think Mark Vidal has become an underrated passer, Bob, over his career. Hands again by Mitchell. First to the floor. Kasuki tied up by Macy Oteague. A held ball. We'll keep it with Kansas State when we come back. The Wildcats shooting 60% from the field. Nine for their first 15. Davion Mitchell with a sweet floater. Davion Bradford. He's been just as good. Well, Kevin, we've got a closer game than we certainly would have expected. Baylor, they drubbed Kansas State. The two regular season meetings between these two teams. K-State never held a lead and gave up an average of 103 and a half points in the two Baylor wins during the regular season. But France, so far, different story this afternoon. Well, that's why it's close, Bob, because my coaching antenna tells me that Baylor would let down. Kansas State played last night, and they played well. And not a big surprise to me right now, but it is a long game. Good hands by Deshaun Gordon. Knocked it off Macy Oteague. So it will stay with Kansas State. You sit around and you watch a team that you beat by 40 or 50 twice. And it's human nature sometimes to get a little bit complacent. Nice spin move by Gordon. Out of control. And a blocking foul is called on Mark Vidal. That is his second. So even though Deshaun Gordon was out of control, he's going to earn two at the free throw line. Well, you're exactly right. He was falling back when he was when there was contact. And Deshaun, fortunate, he's going to get a shoot a couple free throws. Jonathan Chamochachua is back at the table. As Vital will most likely sit for the rest of the first half with the two fouls. I'm a big fan, Bob, of Deshaun Gordon at the foul line. He's the former Chicago Sun Times Chicago High School Player of the Year. But because he does a lot of those dirty work things we've talked about so far, but he's got to get in the gym this summer and make that three ball at a little higher rate because he does so many things to help you win. You don't want him to be a liability on the offensive end. And he ranks at the top 15 in the Big 12 in rebounds, mm -hmm. one of only four guards to be a part of that group. So you're right, he does the other things to fill up the box score. There's a lob, Kamachachua. Nice touch as he is able to lay it right over the front of the rim. Pack. Hits a three off the curl. And off a 6 8 guy right in his face. Great run, great play, and a great catch and shoot. He got his feet squared to the basket almost while he was in the air. Good D by Meyer. Pack made five threes last night. That's his first today. And now the first foul called on Mike McGurl. Watch how Nigel Pack squares his body. He's going to come off this screen with a good defender on him, and he's already squared, gets it up quickly. We always tell those shooters, do your work early. Get your feet educated. Be squared before you catch it. KV on Mitchell. Knocks it down. That shot is going to allow him to make money playing basketball because he's shooting nearly 50% from three this season, as ludicrous as that sounds. Gordon can't answer. Shamo Chachua is able to corral the rebound. Butler to T. Yes. Great ball movement. It started with Meyer. Matthew Meyer got that started. Timeout called by Bruce Weber. And we'll step aside for 30 seconds. We are back. Baylor with a six point lead. And their ball movement obviously is a kick. Yeah, watch Matthew Meyer now because he's good in pick and roll. Watch, the, watch Kasupke. He's got to help on the roll, man. So as he helps, Meyer throws it behind him, and that breaks down the defense. There's the drive. 
the kick, and we see that all season long from that Baylor offense. It must be fun if you're Jared Butler. Almost like being an NBA point guard with shooters like this. That's why he's number two in the Big 12 in assists per game, because when you execute and make that pass, you know it's going down. Absolutely. Those three guards are just automatic. Here come, oh, they switched out. How about the job by Butler at the rim to meet Davion Bradford, who needs a second try to lay it in. Bradford doesn't mind. He got two more. They tried to run the same jump shot play on the other side, and big man cheated out. There's some play by Jared Butler, in spite of the fact that Bradford still scored. See, there's the switch, and the big fella slips to the basket. He thinks he's got a dunk. And Jared Butler says, no, sir. Well, Fran, I've been sitting at home in my living room all year listening to people keep telling me how unathletic Jared Butler is. That was feedback he got from the NBA draft. Can we just say that that is not true? That play right there, what are people talking about? Educate me. Well, there's an NBA draft industrial complex, all these bloggers and uh, I don't pay attention to him just I just watch with my eyes and see what he does just like you just did the back tap out to midcourt and it's off Baylor but it's a great point Holly he Bob Jared Butler had zoom calls with 23 NBA teams remember last summer he could not work out as could anybody for NBA teams and there's the feedback that he got be more of a playmaker Let's cut down on the turnovers, work on your defense. And uh, he's certainly done all those things. Leaning in and drawing a foul this time is Davion Bradford. It'll be on Butler. Now, so impressed with talking to this young man yesterday, Bob. One of the difficult things of our season in the Big 12 is not really getting to know the guys like we normally would, but. Uh, what a great attitude. Holly pointed it out. I really think, and I think a lot of David McCormick, congratulations as the new as the most improved player in the league. But I think this young man is is every bit as good, maybe a little bit ahead of where David was, which bodes well for his career. And it looks like we've got a violation on Baylor that's going to give Davion Bradford another chance. And I mentioned David because this young man would love to be as good as David McCormick is right now as a junior. Well, one recruiting service had him rated as high as number five in Missouri, but of course David McCormick was a McDonald's All-American right. coming to Kansas. And Bradford makes the lane violation payoff for Kansas State. It's a two-point game. Davion Mitchell draws another foul. They'll shoot two when we come back. Two-point lead for Baylor. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. Well, this is certainly, Kevin, a very surprising score. And, Fran, I'm sure for a team that got drubbed twice by Baylor during the regular season, the longer Kansas State hangs around in this game, the more I'm sure they're going to have a belief that maybe they can steal one. And it would be one of the great upsets in, the tournament, in this tournament's history. I will say this. I do not think Baylor is back to where they were, Bob. I've watched them in person lately. I've watched them every game they've played. They've had some great moments, but I don't think they've gotten that, uh, what I'd call their mojo back. A girl lost it on the way up, stripped away by Butler. I think the Kansas State fans think Butler got away with a grab at midcourt as McGurl kind of broke a tackle and <laughs> was able Let's watch to get out now. in front. There's all ball, and I think that was off McGurl. Doug Sermons needed a little bit of help there, and... Uh, that looked like it was off the offensive play. 
McGurl fouled by Chum with Chachwa. That's the eighth foul on Baylor, so it will be a one and one for Mike McGurl. Well, the story offensively, at least for Kansas State, has been Davion Bradford. Yeah, done a really good job fundamentally of keeping that ball up, using his size. We, we talked to Scott Drew a number of times late in the season, Bob, and he said in calling around to some of his other friends in coaching who have dealt with the COVID pause, they told him that it would take anywhere between three and five games to recover where you were. They're still a great team. I, I just don't think they have the sharpness that they did over the first 17. Now they convinced me their third game back with the overtime win at West Virginia. I thought from there they were themselves, but this looks more as Butler throws it away, like the Baylor team that came back and played Iowa State and lost to Kansas. A scramble for the ball and a throwaway right to right to Butler. He crosses over and finishes. If you go back to that West Virginia game, Bob, this is what I said earlier, but we, we got interrupted by other plays. Matthew Meyer changed the season around in Morgantown because I still didn't think they were back. His 10 points in the second half gave them a little bit of their swag back. But as far as the, you know, Sunday it was good, obviously, when they when Macy Oteague went nuts. I'm just telling you what my eyes tell me. They're not all the way back. And uh, it's obvious that they're going to still be a great team going into, into the NCAA tournament. But interesting to see if they're going to be dominant, which they should be when they're at their best. The roll man, uh, he had him. Avion Bradford was wide open, and McGurl taps his chest, saying, my bad, as he knows he missed an opportunity. Well, and again, that was a defensive breakdown by Baylor. Lucky that that ball sailed. There's no way Bradford should be that open at the rim. Selton Miguel hustles back into the game as McGurl will take a seat. in the corner comes up a little bit short well, Bruce Weber's got to be thrilled with this first half Taylor is now 5 of 12 from 3 nice catch by Rudy Williams tries again and scores Rudy. Yeah, fortunate it wasn't a foul call on Bradford, but that's not his strength right now, is keeping that guard in front of him. Butler in double figures for the 20th time out of 23 games this season. Now the defense starts to smother and at the rim again! It is Butler <laughs> challenging Davion Bradford. Well, Bradford gets open again, which is a good thing for the Wildcats. Take a look. Look how open he is, and that's Butler for the second time. And there you see that time he got Bradford on the arm. But the pick-and-roll coverage right now by Baylor is uh, lacking somewhat because there's no way you could lose a guy that big who's that open at the rim. Yeah, I can't imagine that's how Scott Drew has drawn it up. Hey, when Davion Bradford rolls to the rim, let's keep having our point guard back there to guard the rim and try and defend him. Well, that happens because his man, Bradford, gets stuck out on the perimeter too long. So Bradford in double figures for only the 10th time this season, but the fifth time in the last eight games for Kansas State. So... He's been a much bigger offensive factor of late. He's having a heck of a first half. And Butler has to go to the bench with his second foul. Well, Bradford will get a rest. 18 is his career high, and he's got 15 already. 
Meyer lobs one up. Bamba can't handle the alley oop. Gordon, eight to shoot. Leans in, flips it up. It won't go. It belongs to Baylor. This is that situation here we talk about a lot. Two for one territory if you're Baylor. And uh, again, good to get the shot up by about 40 so that you ensure you may get two of them. And there's one. Mitchell accelerates. Lost the ball. A fight for it. Myers on the ground. Bamba's there as well. They're both digging with Casey Eziego to try and get it if they can. And we'll step aside for 30 seconds and come right back. A quick look at the New York Life ACC tournament. Virginia survived against Syracuse. So they are into the semifinals tomorrow, awaiting the winner of Georgia Tech against Miami and of course the positive COVID test for Duke ends their season so Florida State with a bye into the semifinal round later on at 8.30 Eastern we'll have Virginia Tech coming up against North Carolina here on ESPN to see who Florida State will play. That good Virginia Tech team ravaged by a little bit of the COVID pause as well and we played four games in February. We've got a great coach in Mike Young Former K-State assistant Chester Frazier is there now. The girl back in, he's got two fouls, but they want his offense on the floor. He gets double teamed. Mitchell takes it away. Great hands, though, by Rudy Williams to get back in the passing lane and give it back to Kansas State with a chance to hold for one. Good job by McGurl. He pointed at the clock. He said, we're going to get the last one. Five seconds to go. McGurl for three off the front rim. Tapped around. Gets to the sideline. That ends the half. And it's only a two-point lead at halftime for the number one seed. As Baylor in a low-scoring game, 36-34. They do have the lead at the break. But boy, Kansas State has to feel terrific about themselves going to the locker room love their defense we've seen it improve all season at the end of the year and they have caused Baylor fits let's go down to Holly well coach a tight game at the half what are you seeing in your team right now that's got to improve well uh, first and foremost uh, coming into a game normally the team that plays the night before usually starts out well so we expected that K-State's uh, really been playing well. Coach Weber's done a great job with them defensively. They're really good. So we expected a battle now. Um, I thought we got a little separation, and then we, we, we had way too many turnovers. So normally in that first game, you got a little jitters um, with our vet, veteran guards. Hopefully uh, uh, that's gone now, and we can really clean it up because um, we've had some good looks when we got shots. We just need to get a lot more shots. In the first two games, I think we had 23 assists and 24 turnovers. Excuse me, 23 assists and 24 assists. And this game's not, not nowhere near where those two were. All right. Thank you so much, Thank Coach. You. Appreciate it. Well, to that point, eight assists for Baylor in the first half and 13 turnovers. Keeping Kansas State in it. A two-point lead for Baylor. Time to head back to the studio. Kevin Connor, Seth Greenberg, LaFonso Ellis. They've got the Audi Halftime Report. Kevin? All right, Bob, thanks so much. Baylor in a tight one in there. Welcome back to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by SoFi. It's the, the quarterfinal round of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship here at T-Mobile Center in Kansas City. Just about set for the start of the second half between Baylor and Kansas State. How unlikely is this two-point game at halftime? Well, the first two meetings between these teams, non-competitive. Baylor won both games, going away, led by 29 at halftime in meeting number one, 28 at halftime in meeting number two. They lead by two at halftime today. Bob Shoes and Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe set for the second 20 minutes. The first 20 minutes were very, very surprising, to say the least, Fran. Yeah, and Scott Drew told Holly Rowe, team that plays in that opening round game sometimes has an advantage because they've gotten their feet wet, and this big guy with size 17 shoes 
he's gotten his feet wet because Davion Bradford is on his way to a career high. Dominating inside, seven feet, about 260. Terrific hands, good feel, and uh, they are in this ball game, Holly Rowe. And with more, let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, his career high is 18 points, and he already has 15 in the first half. Earlier this season, they had really struggled to get him the ball, but they have been methodical about feeding him where he can succeed. He's already put a lot of fouls on Baylor, both Mark Vidal, Jonathan Chumwachachua, and Jared Butler, all with two fouls. Something to watch. How can Baylor react and respond when he keeps putting fouls on them? Six of those points the free throw line. Pretty good first half for the freshman from St. Louis. That's about as efficient as it gets as Sultan Miguel just picked up a foul to start off the second half. ACOT. A long rebound ends up with Nigel Pack. Now, friend, if I would have told you that Kansas State would only have made two threes in the first half, would you have thought there was any recipe for them to keep the game this close? Not likely, especially since they have not shot the three well this year and Baylor shoots it so well, we should have had a bigger lead right now for the Bears. A girl swings one to the corner. There's a three on the way, and it goes down for Nigel Pack. The first lead of the season over Baylor for Kansas State. Mike McGurl was rubber band man that time, the way he Pass that ball around the defender. Davion Mitchell answers. And Baylor right back on top. It's amazing, Bob. This kid, Davion Mitchell, his first 43s he took of his career at Baylor, he was like 10 for 40. Since then, he's been well over 40%. He is the ultimate gym rat. But let's go back. I want you to watch this pass, Bob, and watch Mike McGurl wrap it around the defense. Wow. Finding Nigel Pack in the deep corner. Really well done. The girl. Offensive foul. He warded off Davion Mitchell and got rung up. That's his third. So that will send McGurl to the bench and Rudy Williams will come back. Now, Mike McGurl has yet to make a field goal. He's got one point, averages close to 12 points per game. So how long does he sit with three? As long as this game is close, Bruce Weber will keep him on the bench, trying to save him for the stretch. But believe me, if it gets to 6-8 in that range, he'll be back with us. Butler attacks. Back the other way, Sultan Miguel. He floats one out to Pack, tries another three. He's got another! That was a great look. I don't know how Selton Miguel knew that Pack was there, other than the fact that they've been playing together all season, because he went left and threw it back over his right shoulder and found this freshman who's really coming into his own. Teague from the elbow. Classic case, when you're the underdog, you want to shrink the game. The longer this game goes with this kind of score it puts a lot of pressure on the favorite pack feeling it short offensive rebound gordon couldn't connect and it's a wrestling match and miguel and thamba end up with a held ball that stays with the wildcats well you'll love dejuan gordon's effort right there but he's got to put that ball back in you get an easy opportunity like that against this defense and you cannot cannot waste it Davion Bradford backing down Thamba. Off the window, too strong. The rebound to Vital. Thamba plays catch with Vital. Vital's floater won't go. Gets his own miss. Tried a second time and couldn't convert. Miguel drives it and reverses it. That's what you call a slasher right there. He is not going to shoot the jump shot. And you have to back off of him and take away the drive. That 
That's the first field goal for Miguel. Davion Mitchell, and it looks like a foul is going to be called on Miguel. And he just bowled over Flo Famba setting the screen. This is classic KYP, know your personnel. 23% three-point shooter, so Vidal's got to know that and give him a little cushion. Instead, the pressure forces Miguel into what he does well already, which is attack the basket. Miguel to the bench. Luka Supki comes back in. Chamo Chachua back in as he replaces Flo Thamba for Baylor. Pass in the lane, Davion Mitchell turns it over. Deshaun Gordon to the corner. Rudy Williams in the mid-range. It won't go. Fight for the loose ball, Davion Bradford wins it. Offensive rebound, oh boy. nearly turned it over. Instead at the elbow, it's Pack. he pulled the string. Oh, I love this effort by K-State. Give them credit, they are making this a dogfight. Rainbow Macy floater is there for Macy O.T. He almost never misses that shot, Bob. Those three guards are so good at what I call that high paint game. When you do that, you avoid the charge. Nigel Pack throws it down low, and it looks like Butler is going to be called for holding DB on Bradford. That's Butler's third. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. And the Lincoln family of luxury SUVs. Back at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship, Bob Wischusen, Fran Fraschilla, Holly Rowe. We've watched Mike McGurl cheer a lot from the sideline, and here's why. And Fran, you said it. Were Kansas State to pull off this upset? To you, it felt like probably the biggest upset in the history of the Big 12 Championship. Well, now we've got the numbers to prove it. It would be the largest upset in Big 12 history tournament or regular season based on Baylor being a 20-point favorite. Don't let anybody say we don't have a crack research team <laughs> here in the bowels of the T-Mobile Center. Here's the interesting thing for K-State. 28 of their 42 points today have been scored by freshmen, and including the terrific performance so far by the big fella, Davion Bradford, with 15. And this guy with the ball has been pretty good, too, Nigel Pack. Oh, they tried to get that mob again. They were ready. One on the shot clock. No recognition. And a shot clock violation. They looked to post it inside. Once they didn't throw it inside, they were at the mercy of the clock, and they didn't see the clock. We've had six field goals made this half, which have resulted in a lead change. So this has been back and forth between these two teams. The one seed against the nine seed. SEOT. Looking for some room with the left hand. Able to finish, plus the foul. Finish is his middle name because this guy makes everything at the rim. Take a look right here. This is offhand right here. These three guards have lived in the gym for two years. They challenge each other every day not just in practice, but in workouts, and they've gotten so proficient at being able to finish these shots. Macy Oteague spent two years at UNC Asheville before heading to Baylor. Last year, his first year with the Bears, was second team all Big 12. This year, third team all Big 12. He still never played in an NCAA tournament. Didn't get there with UNC Asheville. And of course, last year, Baylor, they would have been a national championship threat last season. But we had no NCAA tournament. The answer, no, the wave off the basket by Rudy Williams. He got hit with a foul at one end, and now he's called for a charge at the other. Well, he knocked JTT over with a feather right there. Let's take a look. Here's the drive. He set, but man, it looked like he slid. It really did. He was set. Juan Gordon, though, takes it back. 
13 turnovers in the first half for Baylor, Bob. They, they had 13 games this season where they didn't even have 13 turnovers for the game. Gordon with a shot fake. Banks it in. Oh, good job. Hung in the air. We're getting down to that point. Don't go anywhere. You might see an upset for the ages. We said this a week ago. The defense we've seen from K-State at the end of the season looked like what we saw in 2018 and 19. Teague with an unusual decision. Gets the floater to go after he passed up a wide open three. He usually doesn't hesitate when he's that wide open from three-point land. I guess when you make 70% from two, you're trying to figure out what's, what's better. You can't do the math in your head right away. Beyond Bradford. Tom Machacho challenges him. The Vitals got the rebound. Beyond Mitchell. Got it. Timeout time. Stop the run. You wondered when the run would come for Baylor. Is this it? They've opened up a seven point lead with 13 19 to go. We are in game two of four still to come. Kansas and Oklahoma at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN and over on ESPN2. We will cap the night with Texas, Texas Tech. Again, that was the matchup that was set to take the floor one year ago today when the world shut down. I'll never forget sitting courtside watching the Longhorns and Red Raiders staff come out and all of a sudden start to clean the benches out and word spread that what had happened at the Big 12 championship, Fran, it happened at so many other places around the world of sport and certainly college basketball as March Madness stopped in its tracks. The world stopped and we are so happy that we are back here one year later, albeit still trying to figure out a way to navigate through a global pandemic. Well, the goal is next year at this time, this entire place is packed like it usually is. The, the best postseason tournament I think there is. It's always here in the power and light district. Pack lets a three go and knocks another one down. They needed that because that run was starting. It was a good strategic timeout by Bruce Weber. Can Kansas State keep scoring? That's the question. Nigel Pack has made four threes. He had five last night against TCU. This is locked down to nine. Yeah, outstanding defense. Oh, on Mitchell explodes to the goal. What acceleration again he shows. Ashwan hey, Gordon blocked by Vital, but a foul call. I mean, this is a blur. Take a look now. Watch the change of pace right here. He is, he's not only fast, but he's as good at changing speeds and stopping on a dime or not as anybody in college basketball. Bob, he makes 50% of his off the dribble jump shots, and that will really pay off at the next level because you have to be able to make the off the dribble three and create space. He can do that. Hey, can I go back to the Texas, Texas Tech game? Texas Tech has beaten Texas twice. The Longhorns are not going to eat a pregame meal until 4.30. They're probably watching right now. Shaka Smart has done a terrific job of putting that team in position to get to a Final Four. And everything about that team tonight is about the three guards. If those three guys come out and know they're in a street fight, they've got terrific athletes up front. But Jones, Coleman, and Ramey have to be ready to play. Otherwise, Tech's going to win a third time. But Texas is a team that can get to a Final Four. All the ingredients are there. Lothamba thought about it. Teague instead will release. 
Nigel packed the rebound, and Kansas State continues to hang in there, down by only four. What I like about K-State is they've handled the pressure defensively. Pack for three. Short. They got room. Meyer tries a triple. And Deshaun Gordon has the rebound. Really like the way Bruce Weber has orchestrated his young point guard from the sideline. They pushed it some, but mainly they're getting into the half court and running their offense. Hands by T. He creates the turnover, and he'll cruise in for two. Yasupki, that's blocked by Thamba. Six-point lead for Baylor. Kansas State trying to hang in in the quarterfinals of the Big 12. Hey, listen, Seth, you can only have eight teams in the Elite Eight. You got 16 right now. We got to <laughs> pare it down. Let's go. I know you love all these great coaches and players, but uh, no, Ohio State, I think they have to get back to where they were. But you can easily have, Bob, in this league, the Big Ten, you can have a stretch of your season where you meet good teams and you're still playing well. Oklahoma's a good example of that. Well, it's certainly cyclical as to which league is the best league, and at times it can rotate around, but I don't think there's any question this year. The debate is between the Big Ten and the Big 12 as to which of the two has been the best league. The Big Ten with more teams to choose from, but we've got seven teams that are ranked in the top 25 out of only 10 total teams in the Big 12 all playing today. I think the Big Ten's got better big men. They've got some elite big men, obviously, with Kofi Coburn and, and uh, Luca Garza, but this league has 15 to 18 great guards. This league, to me, by far has better guard play than the Big Ten. Yeah, I said it. Well, <laughs> it'll be a proving ground start next right. week when they all start to play each other. And we'll see how many of these teams from the Big 12 end up maybe getting to an Elite Eight or a Final Four as Nigel Pack does it again. We've got a one possession game with the one seed against the nine seed in the quarterfinal round of the Phillips 66 Big 12 championship. If you would have told Bruce Weber with 10 minutes to go in this game, he'd be down three, he'd be dancing a jig over at the Dubliner. Butler is miss rebounded by Vital. Avion Mitchell creates space. Got another. Off the dribble. Nobody better. 21 for Mitchell to go along with 19 from Teague. They have carried Baylor offensively in the second half. Davion. Those two have combined for their offense. McGurl on the alley-oop misses it at the rim. They had it, didn't they? Davion Mitchell reminds me of Donovan Mitchell, and they're not related. Look at this guy. Knocked out of bounds. Kansas State believes it was off Davion Mitchell, but they don't get the call. Watch the bounce. Look at that balance. He steps back full speed, and he squares himself to the, to the basket. And if you think that's an exaggeration, remember, Donovan Mitchell was not thought of as the player he is now coming out of Louisville. Butler, short. Hack threw it behind Iziegu. T floats one off the window, score it, plus the foul. Automatic. Automatic floater game. Watch this. 
This has been honed in that gym in Waco many, many hours. All three of those guards have challenged each other. It's that old story about Muhammad Ali, champions, champions are made in that road work at five in the morning. These three champions have challenged each other for two years. Tough call if you're Nigel Pack. You took an elbow to the chin and you got called for the foul. Bob, you realize Mitchell and Teague are 47 and 5 in two seasons. And they're dueling here in the second half. Teague now has 22 against Mitchell's 21. Justin Miguel collapsed upon. And a foul will be called. Jared Butler can't believe it, but Miguel will shoot a couple. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans. The softball and baseball seasons are in full swing, and there's more than 200 matchups available, along with the early rounds of both conference tournaments. Plus, it's the home for over 500 live events and original content. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. I like when Chachua out Bamba back here. I like this young man, Miguel. Something Miguel really defends. I would live in the gym, Bob, this summer if I was the K-State young guys because if they can consistently make shots from the outside, Dejuan Gordon, Miguel, Pat, Kasutki, so got a good nucleus. Uncontested rebound for Vital. That's his eighth to go along with five assists. Mark Vital's got two points, and yet eight rebounds and five assists. That's what he does. Mark Vital is the winningest Baylor player in Big 12 games in their history. And his record in Big 12 games is 45 and 22. Mm -hmm. He'll also be the first player from his family to graduate from college. Yep. It's just a great story. Really cool. He shot block at seven. Watch the dribble. Butler. Connects. Big time. Jared Butler from Damian Mitchell. Baylor's got the lead up to 10. Their largest lead was 11. They still could cover. Kansas State running out of gas. Long baseline pass. Pack setting up Davion Bradford. The first points of the second half for Davion Bradford. And one point away from a career high. Looks like Flo Thamba was moving when the screen was set. So it will go back to Kansas State when we return. Oregon, I like their depth. I like Chris Duarte. They've got balance. They're going to be very underseated, Seth, as you know, because of all those injuries early in the season. That is a legit team, in my opinion. Well, a team that has looked a lot more legit over these last couple of weeks, and now uh, they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Baylor today. Has been a surprising Kansas State group trying to end the season on an up note, even if they drop this game. As Davion Bradford squares up, thought about it from the elbow. Shot clock under 10. Miguel throws it to a spot where Wilt Chamberlain wouldn't have been able to bring it in. As McGurl just watched it sail over his head. That's what we called. That's the right idea. He was open. And if he was eight feet tall, he might have had a chance. Yep. Teague dribbling the shot clock down. To the corner to Mitchell. 
Tapped around. Thumba got it to Vital back outside. Four or three by Butler. Quick release, too. Quack. He caught that ball, never dipped it. Not easy to do. What a rhythm shooter he is. Bradford. We'll go to the line. Let's take a look at our game track brought to you by Travelocity. And, Fran, you mentioned the guards. I mean, the great guards that there are in this league. This might be the best collective backcourt in all of college basketball, and they have carried their team today. You know, they're, they're very, very close. They play with no individual ego. When three different players among that group have scored over 30 in a game this season, the other two and their teammates celebrate that. We saw that on Sunday, Bob, when Macy Oteague went for 35 against Texas Tech. Two at the line for Bradford. And now some pressure for Kansas State. Although, how do you press these guards? No, they're not a pressing team either. That's called token pressure. Which means no pressure, really, against this team. Lamba, shot fake. Hanging from the rim. Nice. Big flow gets better. Now, we haven't talked about this today. This is a great development culture. When you have a red shirt end up as a lottery pick, Epe Udo, and a guy that didn't start till his senior year in college and be the 12th pick in the draft, Torian Prince, they really do a great job of developing not only guards, but bigs too. Girl for three. Did he beat the timer? He did not. Nope. They wave it off. They're going to go to the monitor to make sure that they got the call, right? And boy, that was a quick review. So my girl did not get it off in time. I could be cynical and say that was record time at the monitor, but uh, I think everybody in the building, including the three officials, knew that did not count. Well, Baylor pulling away felt inevitable this entire game. They are that good. And Kansas State has put up a very game effort, but now down by 12 with five minutes to go. No, well, they've... Uh, they have not allowed Scott Drew to take those starters out, Bob. Which, given that they had three weeks off, probably doesn't mean a lot. I think this Baylor team is pretty well rested. Butler hounded by McGurl. Five to shoot, puts one up. Vital's got it. Stepped on the end line. Although Kansas State feels like one of those teams where when we're watching them win next year, if you didn't watch them at the end of this year, you're looking at them and saying, all right, well, they were 8-20. and 20. Where did this come from? But they're a developing team. You can see how much they've improved the last couple of weeks of the regular season and the effort they put forth against Baylor today. Yeah, they still have some things they have to work on. They must become a better shooting team, and they must be a lower turnover team. But the defense, I think, is going to be solid. These young guys will definitely grow up. Gordon from the corner. Yep. Knocks that, one down off the feet from Pat. And that's the guy I talked about earlier. He's got to get into the mid-30s because he does so many things to help you win. But right now he's shooting in the low 20s. 22% from three. He's got to take that next step. That's saved by Gordon. He and Vital go crashing to the hockey boards. And a foul will be called against Baylor. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball.
coming up on Selection Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the app. It's Bracketology. Reese Davis, Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg, Dickie V will break down the brackets. They'll have some special guests as well. Sports Center starts it all off at 515 as Reese and the guys reveal the NCAA men's field of 68 as the teams are announced. So that all coming your way on Selection Sunday. Bob Shoes and Fran Fraschilla. Holly Rowe, the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship quarterfinals. And a game that no one expected to be nearly as close as it has been. Still has a little intrigue. And just before we went to break, Jared Butler committed his fourth personal foul. That puts Selton Miguel at the free throw line. And Fran, if he knocks these down, we get a seven-point game with 3.44 to go. Without a question, we will have some people biting their nails. This guy played in Florida last year, Bob. What was that uh, team that he made, the All-State team? His first team, Florida Independent All-State, which sounds like a tongue twister, yeah. but then you realize that Dayron Sharp from North Carolina. Yep. Scotty Barnes from Florida State. Yep. Jaden Springer from Tennessee. And Kate Cunningham were the other four on that list. It's pretty good company yeah. to keep. Four likely first round picks. That is great company. Adam Flagler in the game for Butler with the four fouls. Avion Mitchell. He's been hard to stop. That time they stopped him. Here comes McGurl the other way. Watch out. Back on the wing. Can't hit the three. Schwan Gordon puts it back up. Oh! Rolls off the rim, and Teague's got the rebound. Man, packed with the open three, couple chances at the rim, and we would have really tightened things up. And you can see now Baylor. You know what this is like, Bob? This is like Apollo Creed and, and Rocky back in the day. It's going to go 15 rounds. Maybe it goes 14. But the challenger is taking it to the champion. Maybe we will get to that 15th round. As <laughs> Baylor just committed their 21st turnover. Wow. I mean, that might be the most unusual of all the statistics that are unusual about this game. Well, I, I don't think they're back yet. I really don't. They've had moments where they've been terrific. I, I know, I know they beat some good teams. Blocking foul calls. So McGurl will go to the free throw line. Davion Mitchell ends up being called for the foul. That's his second. This game is why you don't take Baylor and Gonzaga versus the field in the NCAA tournament. Because in a one-game situation, this right here is a two versus 15 seed game in a tournament. Maybe three versus 14. But in a one-shot deal, you play 30 games, and you have one off night, this is what can happen. Making it even more unlikely that the score is what the score is. McGurl's got three points, all at the free throw line. Mm -hmm. He does not have a made basket. And yet it's only a five point game with two and a half minutes to go. Right now, Baylor just milking clock. Jared Butler. That's great D. Eight to shoot. He'll try again. Behind the back, leans in, off the window. Too strong. The girl's got it. Oh, man. Here we go. How good is this? The girl looking for his first made field goal. That's off the front rim. No legs. Good defense by Flagler. He made McCurl step back. No legs. Came up short. Good look. ACOT. Again, the shot clock winding down. Weaving. Off glass. He does it again. ACOT. Automatic on those drives. Pack 
for three. Yes! It's not over yet. I think, did Weber want a timeout and they didn't give it to him? I think he's frustrated by exactly that. He only has one remaining. Wouldn't foul here. I'll give it one more possession down four. If you're Kansas State, get a stop and push it. Davion Mitchell with eight to shoot. 38 left in the game. Davion Mitchell again accelerates. No good. McGurl's got it. Chance to make it a one possession game. Throws it cross court. Pack. Hurls one into the lane. I think he thought he was fouled and was begging for a call, and now McGurl has to give the foul on Jared Butler. Let's watch now. They're coming up the court. Oh, man, and I, th I do think he thought he was fouled. And that's exactly what yep. Bruce Weber is claiming as well in defense of Nigel Pack. I mean, is that a player hoping that just because I'm now being bumped, if I hurl one at the rim, the officials will have to call a three-shot foul? I think it's an instinct play. I think he just felt, once he felt contact, he threw it up. Take a look right here. Let's watch. It's hard to claim this is a shot. And see, I, I think that that should be called a foul, Bob. I know it's incidental, but he put the... We don't say advantage-disadvantage anymore, but I don't blame Nigel Pack right there. He's a smart player. He knew oh, Baylor yeah. was in the bonus in terms of him shooting free throws. But what a day for this young man. What a couple of days. Six of nine from three-point land today. After last night in the win over TCU, he carried them offensively with 23 points. He was five of six from three-point land last night. And if you're looking for rays of hope and you're a Wildcat fan, these freshmen today have provided you with some excitement. 42 of the 66 points. The turnovers for Baylor, by the way, the 21, a season high. So they were sloppier than they have been in any other game so far this season as we take a look at our player of the game brought to you by Phillip 66. You knew it was going to be one of the Baylor guards. And it's Macy Oteague with 24 points, 16 after the break. Which means he's had a good week because coming off the career high 35 versus Texas Tech on Sunday, he has not stopped. Young man from Cincinnati, Ohio. A girl for three. Down to the last 10 seconds. An easy two for Selton Miguel. Looks like Kansas State will call their final timeout down by four. With 10 seconds to go, stranger things have happened. Without a doubt. Yep. Crazy things have happened. You got to put this pressure on now. Hope for a turnover. Anything, Bob. A, a four-point play. I mean, you just have to continue to coach right down to the wire. The winner of this game will play Oklahoma State in the semifinals tomorrow. But Baylor being put as much to the test as we ever could have imagined by the nine seed Kansas State. Texas Tech and Texas will wrap the night after our next quarterfinal matchup comes your way at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN between Kansas and Oklahoma. And just again to show the depth of the field in the Phillips 66 Big 12 championship last night would be considered the play-in round, and we had a ranked team playing in the play-in round just for the right to get to this Thursday quarterfinal grouping of games. And that ranked team would not surprise either one of us if they got to the final on Saturday and maybe win it all. That's an Oklahoma team that in January created some history. Now, this is legal. Watch this. This is fun. This is the football play. All five out of bounds. You can do this after a basket. Put everybody in motion. A little di dig route. Did I get that right? A dig route? Not too bad. Okay. Yeah, we had the quarterback with a little flip into the flat to Davion <laughs> Mitchell. And he picked up about four yards before he was brought down. You can only do that after a basket. Holly Rowe, I've been told, thinks that was a curl route. So we'll defer to Holly, the, uh, the all-knowing college football <laughs> maven on our crew. Although you're pretty good, too. Thanks. <laughs> so Davion Mitchell. Three points behind Teague, so if he knocks these down, 
Those two will have combined for 47 of Baylor 72. And it looks like Mark Vidal has a cut. So he will head back to the bench. And Chamo Chachua back in. Cut me, Mick. Cut me. <laughs> He's like, I got blood here. Is this a foul or not? Davion Mitchell started his career at Auburn for Bruce Pearl. He was backing up Jared Harper and Bryce Brown, who later took the Tigers to the Final Four. He wanted to be a starter. He transferred here a couple of years ago, and boy, has it worked out. And that will put this one on ice. Nine seconds to go, and Baylor now with the six-point lead. McGurl for three. That one misses. And that will take us down to the buzzer. Well, it was not easy by a long shot for the number one seed and the regular season champions. Baylor given as much of a test as we ever could have thought Kansas State would provide. K-State should be proud of how they played today. Without a doubt, outstanding defense, although they, the guards got loose for Baylor, no. But this Kansas State team got better at the end of the season, and Baylor needed a game like this as they get ready for a very good Oklahoma State team, led by Kate Cunningham. So the player of the year in the Big 12 will take on the team of the year in the Big 12 so far this season. Baylor and Oklahoma State both through to the semifinals. Still to come, 6.30 Eastern and 9.30 Eastern. Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas and Texas Tech. For Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe and our entire crew, I'm Bob Wischusen. Thanks for joining us here in Kansas City. More basketball to come. L. Duncan, Kevin Nagandi standing by with SportsCenter.